You have been waiting for a promise from the Lord. Maybe it is a ministry. Maybe God has even told you, this is your calling. This is what I want you to do for my kingdom. Maybe it's a breakthrough. Maybe it's a spouse that he has promised you. Maybe it is a job, you know, a career path for his kingdom. Whatever it is that you've been waiting for, there has been a delay. There has been even circumstances transpire that have caused the promise not to come to pass. And you have sat there frustrated, depressed, wondering, questioning God and saying, God, if you are faithful, why did this promise not come to pass? Why is this promise taking so long? God, if you're a promise keeper, why did you not keep your promise? And what I'm about to say, I have learned from experience. I'm speaking from failure. Most of my videos, I'm speaking from failure, guys. If anybody's messed up with the Lord a million billion times, it is me. Many times it is us that stand in the way of God's promises. Okay? And pray that the Lord show you, okay, if this video is for you. Because it may be that there's just, it's just not God's timing right now for that promise to be fulfilled in your life, okay? Or that calling. You may be doing nothing wrong, but this is for uh, a group of people in specific that God has put on my heart to make this video. And I'm going to give you a list of ways that we can be standing in the promise, in the way of the promise of God or the calling of God upon our lives, okay? I'm going to give you some bullet points. But first, I'm going to take you to the word of God. Now, in a place, we live in a world filled with darkness, a world with media that is pumping lies into our head constantly. We have music telling us what the truth is, what the value of life is, what the purpose of life is, materialism, sex, uh, outside of marriage, lust, uh, you know, showing everybody what, what an amazing life you have, etc., whatever, on social media. And the devil, the minute you step out of your bed, he begins to fight you. Even while you're sleeping, the devil will use dreams of warfare against you. The minute you step out of your bed and you walk out the door into the world, you are, you are entering battlefields. We are in a battle, we are in a war. And with the father of lies, with an unseen enemy who is constantly trying to fill your mind with lies because the mind is the battlefield and you need to renew your mind. You need the word of God. You need it every single day. The way I get these videos and these video ideas is not just through my, my own failures, but also through the word of God. I read and look at all the highlights. The Lord speaks to me and gives me revelation. It's amazing. And if you want God to speak to you, seek him with all your heart and you will find him. And a lot of times when we seek God, and I'm going on a, off on a little tangent, I'm going to come back to this. But a lot of times when you God says, seek me with all of your heart and you will find me. Now, what does it look like to, to seek God with all our heart? Let's say you have a bouncy ball, right, in your house. You don't really care about it. You lose it. You might look for it for like 10 minutes and then you're going to give up. You know why? Because you don't really care about it. You didn't seek for it with your whole heart. But if you lose your keys, your wallet, your phone, baby, I know you're going to be ripping up the floorboards looking for that thing. Why? Because you were seeking it with all your heart. You are, you are not stopping. You were desperately looking. And that is where you find Jesus. Okay, if you're kind of like going to church a little bit here and there, and, then, and you're kind of like reading a couple verses a day, okay, that's good. But at the end of the day, if you want... How big your cup is, okay, of hunger for God, a hunger for his presence, how, 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 how full it is, that hunger, right, is how much God is going to give you. But if you only hunger a little bit, he's only going to give you a little bit. But if you hunger a lot, he's going to give you a lot. And when you seek him in his word, let me tell you, he's going to manifest himself to you. 
So get rid of those distractions. Get in the word of God because this is sort of the spirit. We're in a battle every single day and we need to get up. We need to use the weapons that God has given us. Reading his scriptures, applying it to our life is not enough to read. Praise and worship, putting our eyes back on Jesus, not on our circumstances. Thanksgiving, the sacrifice of Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Okay, prayer. Come on. The devil does not want you to pray. So we're going to get back to this now. Open your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 9. And we're going to go to verse 16. And right here, this is where God chooses the first king of Israel. Okay, he tells Samuel, his prophet, he's like, listen, tomorrow I'm going to send you a guy anoint him. So this is talking about Saul. Tomorrow about this time, I will send you a man. This is God speaking to Samuel. I will send you a man out of the land of Benjamin and you shall anoint him to be captain over my people, Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cry is come unto me. So the purpose for Saul's life, okay, his calling of ministry, God is prophesying it to Samuel. And he's going to prophesy it to, to, to Saul as well through Samuel. It is to save Israel, save God's people out of the hand of the Philistines, right? So we're going to jump a little bit. And I want you to really read the story, y'all. It is such a good story. You get immersed, okay? But we're going to jump a little bit. And we are going to go to... Uh, yeah, right here in verse 7. It says that God is with you, right? So Samuel is saying that God is with Saul. And the spirit of the Lord comes upon Saul and he starts to prophesy amongst the prophets. Okay, it's interesting how prophets get together and start prophesying. Um, and, and then, okay, what happens? Saul disobeys the Lord twice. And the first time, Samuel, the prophet, comes to rebuke him. And Samuel said to Saul, listen to this. You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now would the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever. The Lord was going to establish his kingdom upon Israel forever. Saul would have reigned and, and, and Jesus would have been called the 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 root of da uh, the the root of not the root of david he would have been called the root of saul but he's not he's the root of david look how much he lost by being disobedient to the lord twice and the first time he's telling him god had this purpose for you but because of your disobedience he's going to rise up another one and one of the ways that we stand in the way of God's promises is disobedience. Y'all, I'm speaking from experience. We need to understand. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Obedience is important. And a lot of people want to say, oh, it's works, it's works, and repentance is works. No, baby. Jesus, the first thing he did when he started his uh, ministry is he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repentance is not a work. Repentance is a fruit of faith it, it naturally comes from true genuine faith okay but we have to obey the lord okay and it may be that the lord is uh putting a delay because of disobedience right think about the israelites when they got out of egypt through moses okay what happened they complained in the wilderness and because of their complaining, the Bible says, they wandered in the wilderness 40 years when they could have been in the promised land. But they put a delay in, the promise, in their promise to get to the promised land because of their complaining, because of their disobedience to God, because of their unbelief, right, in God. So another way that we can be standing in the way of our promises is unbelief. 
you know, we can be delaying it because of unbelief. Um, so we're going to go back to the story of Saul because, y'all, this is amazing what God just showed me here. But now your kingdom shall not continue. This is verse 14 in chapter 13. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people because you have not kept that which the Lord commanded you. Okay. Now we're going to go to chapter 15 and verse 10. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. Verse 22, and Samuel said, hath the Lord, so, so basically God told Saul, this is the second time that he disobeys. God told Saul, Saul, go out and there's these evil, wicked people, the, um, the, I forgot how to pronounce their names. The Amaleks, okay? And the Amaleks, they were just a wicked people. And God said, go and slaughter everyone, right? Even the uh, cattle. And don't spare anybody. And what happens? Saul goes and he slaughters everybody except for the king and except for all of the livestock because that's money, right? And Samuel, you know, comes to him and he's like, why did you disobey the Lord? And he's like, well, I was going to use them to sacrifice to the Lord. I was going to use these, these ox and lambs to sacrifice to the Lord. Poor excuse, okay? And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. A lot of times we sacrifice. We're like, oh, I'm going to go to church every Sunday, but then I'm going to live like the devil the rest of the days of the week. I'm going to keep gossiping with my friends. I'm going to keep having sex outside of marriage and watching pornography and all these things. Like, we cannot live like that. That's not, we're, at that point, we're in trouble with the Lord. We just are. Because we don't truly love him. And we don't truly trust him. When we don't obey him, we are not actually trusting him. We are trusting ourselves and saying, I know better. My way's better. We are acting as our own God and it is idolatry. So to obey is better than to sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion, listen to this. This is so crazy. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. When we rebel against God, it's, as, it's the same as if you're doing witchcraft. It's literally witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Why is stubbornness like idolatry? Because you are so stubborn in your own way that it is only your way and it is you're becoming your own God. Right? Verse 24, it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I fear the people and obey their voice. The fear of man is a snare. The fear of man is a trap. That's what the Bible says. And a lot of times we will choose to obey the voices of people around us or, you know, our family or even our spouse, not, not as well, sometimes our spouse, um, or even, you know, a significant other or something like that, or our friends over the Lord. Oh, come, come to the bar with us. Oh, you know, Eve, eat this apple. Even though God said to Adam, no. Even though God tells us no about certain things, we choose to seek the counsel of other people when we already know what God has already told us. But we seek to get our own way through other people. And it's honestly, we take the blame for all of it because we at the end of the day are responsible for what we do, right? But it was because Saul feared people and obeyed their voice over the Lord that... The kingdom is ripped apart from him, right? So it is just incredible to me, right? That 
God, you know, he, he, he is a God of love. He is a God of love, but he's also a God uh, who corrects and rebukes. And there have been times in my life where I, I wanted something so badly and God had promised me something and there was a huge delay. God had told me for many, many years, Jackie, um, cause I had this vision. I, I, maybe some of you have seen this in another video, but I had this vision of me going to the top of this mountain with a megaphone and telling everybody about Jesus because I'm just an evangelist at heart. God put that inside of me. I want everyone to know that Jesus had changed my life, that I love, that I have fallen in love with, that has literally set me free from addictions, set me free from uh, lust, has set me free from so much, has changed my life, has changed people around me's lives through my prayers. Like, I want everyone to know him. I want everyone. And God told me from a very young age, uh, he had people prophesy over me that I was going to speak to many, many, many people. Uh, and my voice would be heard from many, many people. And I always thought, how is that going to happen? And Lord, when is this promise going to happen? Because I, I want to do some big things for your kingdom. I want to bring so many people to your, your feet. And I was backsliding. I was having sex outside of marriage. I was... Uh, I was doing drugs. I was seeking my own way. I was dating and dating and getting all, all these dating apps and not trusting him to bring the right man into my life. I was stubborn, right? And stubbornness is another way that we can stand in the way of our promises, you know, that God has given us. And there was a huge delay, but the minute that I started finally obeying the Lord and staying steady there, that is when uh, he began to uh, build this ministry and it has been insane to see the prophecies come to pass so yes i do believe in prophecy because i've seen it come to pass um but i know that i delayed it so get out of the way get out of the way get out of your own way and your sin is just it is destroying you it is hurting those around you and it is separating you from the lord it really is come to the lord and let him clean you up you don't need to clean yourself up a baby doesn't get dirty in the mud and then tries to clean itself up before presenting it to presenting itself to the mama the baby goes to the mama and the mama cleans the baby go to god in your sinful state Go to God smoking. Go to God doing all that. Agree with him in sin. Repent and turn away from him using his help. And if you've done it many times and you've backslidden, get up this time. Do it again and keep going. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up and the Lord picks him back up seven times. So just because you're falling seven times does not mean that you're not righteous. You're falling seven times. It does not matter. Keep getting up. Keep going. You know, a baby falls a million times and then eventually gets the hang of it. But we still trip from time to time as adults. God is going to help you through this. He's going to help you through the pornography addiction. He's going to help you through all of these things. And, and remember that before you get the promise... Don't seek the promise more than the promise keeper. And remember that you can get to a point where you don't, the, the promise does not come to pass because of your continual disobedience to the Lord and stubbornness. Absolutely. Because God cannot trust and trust a ministry to somebody that is living for themselves and destroying people around them and themselves with sin. He cannot. He cannot trust somebody with their his son or daughter as a spouse who is continu continuously, without trying at all, without seeking him and his help to get out of it, watching pornography and having sex outside of marriage and living this lifestyle of disobedience, 
if you can't be faithful to your spouse now, how, how are you going to be faithful to your spouse later? If you can't be faithful to God right now, what makes you think you're going to be able to be faithful to your spouse? God needs to see, can you be faithful to your spouse right now before you even meet them? If you're faithful in the little, God will give you the much. So, I want, I want to encourage you. Look, get out of the way. And even though, you know, if there's a promise that, you know, it just didn't come to pass because of your disobedience, God is always making new promises. There are promises fresh, a fresh new for you. God has beautiful things in store for you. Eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor has come into the mind of man what God has prepared for those who love him. That verse is true. And guess what? The greatest treasure before the promises, the greatest treasure you have is Jesus. And if you have him, you have all you need.